When Paul told, uh, real quick before you react to 2110, when Paul told King Agrippa, uh, I wish you was a Christian and all the Romans in here and Jews in here with me, um, real quick, why do you think he said that? Was he, uh, was he trying not to lie and get out of a tough situation? Did he say, trying not to die? did he say, I wish you was a Christian? He took Paul's girdle and bound, uh, and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus said the Holy Ghost. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that own, uh, that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Stop right there. Stop right there. Question. So it says, so will the Jews at Jerusalem bind this man and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles? Uh -huh. Can you demonstrate book, chapter, and verse when Paul was delivered into the hands of Gentile Israelites? Gentile under Israelites. Roman, under, 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 yeah, 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 under Roman authority. Okay, hold on. Book hold chapter on and verse. Let me see that. Somebody can pay to play that one music. For have I called you to, uh, to see, uh, to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Who is he bound, bound to? Let's, wait, wait, let's wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go to verse 19. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had had ought to accuse my nation of. Wait, why is he accusing his nation? That's not the question. I asked wait, you to show the book you just No, asked. no, no, listen, real no question. Okay. Because the Jews aren't Gentiles. So, so it says that you're going to be delivered from. Jerusalem so the into the hands. Stop. Hold on, hold on, bro. Okay. Because the Jews aren't Gentiles. 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 Listen, no question. Okay. Because the Jews aren't Gentiles. Boy, that was the question you just no, asked. no, no. Listen, no question. Okay. Because the Jews aren't Gentiles. So Acts chapter twenty-one prophesied to Paul that he was going to get delivered from. Jerusalem into the hands of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. What you just read substantiated that those Gentiles from Jerusalem, who he was delivered to, was Romans. Not, uh, not, not to mention in Acts chapter uh, uh, 26, 25, Felix had him in bonds from Jerusalem because that's exactly what happened to Paul. Right from you, you got to go pull Acts chapter 26 to get the account. Nor confounded world. Look at what the word world is here. Strong's H5769. Olam. Olam. What is it? Strong's H5769. So, uh-oh. So, again, Isaiah 45 and 17. We have long duration. <laughs> everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, covenant, world, it's dealing with time, duration. This has nothing to do with world. Go to this word. Let's go here. Cosmos. Cosmos. So look at what the word cosmos means. Let's see if it's dealing with duration of time, like the word world did, dealing with, which means olam. Let's see. Nope. Erroneous arrangement. Order, government, this has nothing to do with the word world that we see in Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. This has nothing to do with the word world that we see in Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. This, is, this just debunked Isaiah chapter 45 and 17, Hebrew Israelite doctrine. But, but I have made Esau bear, you know what I'm saying? I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors 
and he is not. You know what I'm saying? So that that's a future connotation of judgment dealing with uh, Esau, man. The devil, man, the most I ain't dealing with. The devil, man, the most I ain't dealing with. The devil, man, the most I ain't dealing with. The devil, man, the most I ain't dealing with. The devil, man, the most I ain't dealing with. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Racha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone, also Sasir Shalom to the elect. Okay. Anyway, okay, I want to go on this video here. It's a lot to touch on in a short time. Uh, I may jump around a little bit, uh, but uh, it's like a two-part video that I just want to kind of bring in together because I wanted to show the hypocrisy of how one minute uh, he's done a debate with Wi-Fi Adam Abbott, which Adam Abbott, Ab Adam Abbott, that crew pretty much destroyed him because it's our doctrine that we a lot of it is what we follow and um, he went on to say that um, going into the uh, the strangers that the strangers were all the time pretty much would have been heathens he also goes on to say that the Gentiles are non-israelites and the strangers are non-israelites but somehow, and this is what I wanted to trip him up on, um, on hypocrisy, that he says, basically, in the New Testament, when it talks about the Gentiles, the majority of the time is talking about other nations. But somehow in this word world in Isaiah 45 and 17, is not the same world in John 3, 16. And he claims he debunked it. So before I get into the Agrippa that he likes to pull over and over again, which we've dabbled in this, and it's good for tune-up. This is light work. <laughs> but this guy named here is Shabar for truth. These guys come in. They don't teach nowhere. They come on the Internet, use the platform to try to debunk the Israelites, but they have no prophecy. And these guys are nothing but Christian Israelites. That's all they are. Shave the beard and put on the tux, man. And go back to church on Sunday. That's what you should be doing. I can't understand how you want to be a leader of the new world that's coming into play. And you don't want to lead. You don't want to be a ruler. This is not what the Most High is talking about. This is not what he sent his son for. He said, uh, what did Yahweh say? Sit on my right hand till I make my enemies my footstool. Right? They're trying to soften the blow, man. And it's not going to work. Okay, so let's go to this Isaiah 45 and 17 when it says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with the everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Now, it's, it's also amazing how they go into the blue letter, like we go into the blue letter, and try to come up and concoct a new doctrine. It might have been a spinoff of One West, I don't know. But this word world, let's go into this word world that he pulls, the, you know, he went into long duration, in, antiquity, future, futurity, futurity, forever, everlasting, ever perpetual, old ancient world, okay, ancient time, long time of past, future for always, continuous existence, perpetual, everlasting, indefinite, or unending future eternity, right? So, he didn't read all that. The Most High made the covenant with the children of Israel. He made the covenant with the children of Israel. And that, that will continue. But they had to go in captivity where he took our heritage. And now we're woken up to our heritage. That never stopped. We're going to get into that, Lord's willing too, a little later. But let's go into the references. You always got to go into the references of these scriptures. This is in the blue letter. Um, one of the references of Isaiah uh, 45 and 17 uh, is Micah 7 and 14. It says, Feed thy people with the rod, the flock of thine heritage, right? Which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed Bashan and uh, Gilead as in the days of old. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old. Remember the years of many generations. Ask thy father and the elders, and they shall tell thee. This is talking about the Israelites. Clearly, one more proof. Okay. Uh, there's, there's so many references here. Okay. Let's go to um, uh, Amos 9:11. This is a reference to Isaiah 45 and 17. This is why we say world without end. It's talking about the Israel shall be saved world without end. And he's trying to say it was a, for a period of time. Ultimately, it's for the eternity, as the script, as the uh, definition says. Let's get another one. Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old. Okay? As the days of old. Okay, so moving on. Let's go to 2 Peter because he wanted to switch the word worlds around like now, you see it's not the same as in John 3 16 but yet John 17 and 9 says I pray for them but I pray not for the world these are dealing with texts that you have to apply properly in the proper context that's why you have words that spell the same but have different meanings we also get to the word Gentile which is not even a Hebrew nor a Greek word which we've done countless videos on that see he dealt with brother Naquam of Adam Abbott which he did cut them with the scriptures. But then you got to go into the, the text. And then you got to go into the definitions. And then you got to go into the references. Okay. That, that's what you have to do. Okay. So let's go to. Um, let's go to uh, Second Peter. Okay. Second Peter 2, 3 and 16. And also in all these epistles speaking in them of these things. In which are some things are hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also to other scriptures unto their own destruction. And that's this guy here, man. So his famous thing is this pull a grip up. <laughs> so let's go to Acts 26. Let's go to Acts 26. Sometimes we don't want to deal with it, but um, we'll deal with it. Acts 26. First of all, we'll go to um, 26 and 2. I also think myself King Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before the touching of all things where I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in the customs and the questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I speak, beseech thee to hear me patiently. So he's telling you to look, this is about the the uh, the Jews, okay? So he's going into the the uh, the the, uh, the guile that he used on Agrippa. Now you had to know that the word Jacob means to plan. Yahawashai, the one you call Jesus, knew about Judas. He knew. He knew what he was and what I mean what he was going to do. Why didn't he say anything? Because it had to play out. Anyway, uh, 26 and uh, 20, uh, but these guys are probably, you can't say the one you call Jesus wasn't honest, right? 26 and 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would be, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day. Why? Because when you go up further in the verse, I ain't got time to read the whole chapter. He ran to Agrippa because Agrippa, I mean, because the Jews, he said, the Jews seek to kill me. So you had Jake today. These, these uh, thug Jakes would have said, oh, Paul was a, was a snitch or scared. When there was accounts of men of the Lord that ran in certain situations. Because it was all of the Lord's show. These, this was the spirit. Anyway. Um, that not only thou but also all that hear me this day were with both almost and altogether such as am expert in these bonds. So this is why you got your Jake today. 
with the Black Lives Matter, so to speak, which is all BS, but getting shot or killed, when you get pulled over by a police, right, you are supposed to use guile, right? You are supposed to use it. You know what it is. You know everything about it. So let's say you get pulled over by a cop and he starts talking Christianity, right? <laughs> you on your way to camp. I mean, maybe this guy don't understand that because he don't go out and teach. But you're on your way to camp, you're on your way to teach, and it's the police officer has the Bible and say, do you believe in Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. You use guile. Yes, I believe in the Savior. We even had white looking cops come to the camp. And we'll say, if you on that sign, or let me say, if your lineage go back, because they don't believe in the 12 tribe sign, okay. If your lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you could very well be saved. That's where we, uh, at Great Millstone, we have the upper hand. Because we are able to uh, follow these guidelines. Right? We don't look at somebody and say, okay, they're, they're a heathen and they're going into uh, captivity. You have to read their spirit. Because our people are scattered. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Okay. Second Corinthians twelve and sixteen. But it, but it, but it be so. But be it so. I did not burn you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Okay. There'll be certain situations. This is what he was going into. Again, I ain't got time to do the whole video on that with the law. When you read Roman, Romans, I believe six, uh, six and sixteen and seventeen, something like that, where he said. Um, you, you, sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under the law but under the grace but then he goes on to say God forbid for you not, uh, uh, you shall not sin right because you're under the law and under grace thou shall not sin okay Paul had a job man he had a serious it had to be real stressful okay so anyway we all go to a reference to that Matthew 10 and 16 Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. So, let's go to some references. I mean, some other translations. To get, sometimes you get another understanding of it. Okay? This is God's words translation. It says, make uh, peace quickly. With your opponent while you're in the way with him in the court with him. Anybody who's been to court, right? Who's been in front of the judge? <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and curse the judge out and see what happened. I know I have. And I made peace with the judge. I knew this before coming in the truth. Because the mercy, your mercy at his is it at his hands. And Paul understood the most high. Ultimately, the Most High God sets up kings. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. It wasn't his time. Yes, he understood the uh, the uh, curses of so-called of the prophets, or what happens to the prophets. He understood that. But he knew at that time, he had to you know, survive. He had a mission. Anyway, um, agree with that adversary. Come to terms without delay. Okay. Um, let me see some more. Make peace quickly with your opponent. If someone brings a lawsuit against you and take you to court, settle this dispute while there it while there is time. Why would he say that? Because it was it was not his time. This is why we have no business as uh, these other guys did sit up there and start fighting. And try to uh, get thrown around with the cops and get get your ass locked up anyway. It's a non -win, non win situation. Okay. It says, um, reach a settlement quickly before you are. This is contemporary English. Before you are dragged into court, make friends with the person who has accused you of wrongdoing. Right. He was making friends with Agrippa. 
because Agrippa had that power. Okay? Well, you keep reading the scriptures. Come to good terms with your accusers quickly. Okay? Reconcile quickly with your adversaries. When you are on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Uh, new, new, the NIV, settle matters quickly and your adversaries who's taking you into court. This is in the scriptures. And this is why you guys that want to go out and fight and act a damn fool with the cops, you're not understand, you're not going with the scriptures. It's about using guile because at the end of the day, it's the Lord's time. It's his show. Okay, so uh, I don't have much on that. I just I, I try to make it quick, and I uh, you know I try to hit all the points. I try to hit all the points um, in this video. This guy uh, wanted to say that the, the was the world was two different things. It's not the same world, but yeah, that can't happen for strangers, and that can't happen. For Gentiles, which Gentile, you had Hellenized, I'll go over this again. You had Hellene to Gentiles, when you look at the word Greek, which that hadn't, didn't have to be there either. You got to go back to the Septuagint or uh, the, the Vulgate. When you look at the word Greek, that word is Hellene. That word Hellene means uh, all nations, not Jews, right? But when you go into deep into the references of, uh, of, of uh, Matthew 7, 14, we say, go, whether should we go teach the Gentiles? That was talking about Israelites who didn't want to consider themselves Jews. And then you had Helen, Hellenized Jews, or Hellenist, Hellenist is what you would call the Grecians. So you had Greeks and you had Grecians. The Grecians were ones who knew they was Jews. This is where you go to Acts 6 and 1. This is when you go to Acts 2 and 5 when they talk about Jews devout men out of every nation under the earth. Those were Israelite Jews who knew they was Israelites. Let's go to Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. I can almost quote this saying it over and over. That I have great and, continue, and heavy and continuous sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself with a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now he's writing this, these are these are the epistles, but Agrippa wouldn't have a problem with this. Because Agrippa was like, hey, I'm in power. Hey, he's speaking out to his people, right? Who are Israelites to who pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of God and the promises, who are the fathers and who are concerned of flesh, Christ Yahusha came. Who is over all God blessed forever. So when you also go to Hebrews 8 and 8. He says for finding fault with them. Behold I will make a new covenant. A new covenant. With the house of Israel. And the house of Judah. Where is everybody else in that? Again you soft shoe Christian Israelites. You can't save them. No matter what you do. No matter how you always pull a gripper. And the story of Agrippa, there is so many verses and scriptures, Acts 5 and 29. So now what these guys are doing, they're bitter Israelites who they're trying to make a name for themselves. I don't know. But they're trying to come up with a vocab Christian doctrine. Even though these guys calling themselves Hebrews, vocab in them will still look at them like who they are. And they don't care. Right? This, this, this is what you call the broken Jake. I can't say the whole thing, but the broken Jake, man. He'll do anything. Okay? This, you know, his owner, house on fire. Well, you know what? Our house on fire. That's how these Jakes get down, man. They don't care. They don't care about the Deuteronomy 28. They don't care about what happened to us in the 1600s. All the way up to 2000s and what's going on with us. They don't care. In their mindset, we just, you know, save everybody. Well, that ain't what the Lord said, man. That's all I have on that show. Long.